Hello, John Felt here. This is the weekly Water Outlook National Edition, November 24th, 2013. Well, for most of the U.S., you can see that there was uh, areas of brown, and those are areas that received few days of precipitation over the last week. In the area of green, parts of the Midwest and parts of the Great Lakes were the more active areas as far as precipitation number of days over the last week. If we look at the national perspective, we see areas in blue are light precipitation, areas in green are modest precipitation, areas in yellow or red are more significant precipitation. So really the more active areas are the southwest U.S., the Pacific Northwest, and then a band from Texas up through the Midwest up into the Great Lakes, scattered parts of the uh, northeast U.S. as well. If you look at percent of normal, you can see areas in red or below normal rainfall and of note there is the southeast U.S. and mid-Atlantic states that have been very dry over the last week. As far as areas go of above normal precipitation, parts of the south and parts of the southwest in particular, which have been well above normal, you can see that area in purple over the southwest uh, U.S. Temperatures um, are a little bit hard or misleading as far as the departure from normal for the week. Areas in yellow and browns are above normal. Areas in blues are below normal and purple are below normal. But really, many of these areas in brown started off mild and they ended up very cold. So it's averaging out close to normal. But really, right now at the current time, much of the nation's experiencing below normal temperatures. Now, the snow depth uh, is indicated here and Early in the season, snow is generally uh, fairly light as far as the amounts on the ground. Uh, we'll be watching the upper Midwest very closely throughout the winter, keeping you updated as far as the snowpack and potential for spring snowmelt flooding. You can see the heaviest snow right now is in the mountainous areas, you'd expect. But there's a light dusting up to even a couple inches or even more on that. You see in Texas, look at this, a sort of a medium blue here. That's over three inches of snow. Very far along the Canadian border, maybe a bit higher, but generally we're early in the season. Some light, some light amounts of snow due to the colder air pushing in and the moisture. And if you want to see where the snow fell last week, zero to four inches are these maroon dots, and the more heavier snow, four to eight inches, are the uh, orange dots. So for the most part, um, across parts of the Midwest, there was a light amount of snow, generally a couple inches of snow here and there. It looks like Iowa uh, definitely had the, the more widespread snow as well as parts of Nebraska. Now this week we're dealing with a split jet stream pattern. And when I think winter and a split jet stream, I think messy type weather. And we have uh, two branches here, and these are indicated by the white lines. The northerly branch here, and that's more active. Look at the colors here, so the wind speeds are higher. That's the cold air availability, the cold air source, the Arctic air. And I'm going to be showing you how this is going to be reinforced right into early December. This branch here is a southerly branch, and that's bringing in some Pacific moisture. And I'll be showing you that in just a moment here. And when we get this Pacific moisture interacting with this colder air, we can get some messy mixed precipitation. So here's a satellite picture. If you sort of track this moisture, this is a water vapor. You can see Pacific moisture is coming into Texas and even up into the Midwest. And with the cold air pulling down south, that's why we do have the potential for some mixed precipitation, primarily in Texas. Now, by late this week, the jet stream over the southern branch looks like it's going to decrease. The northern branch, look at this. Every time we get one of these little dips here, that's another reinforcing push of cold air. So here by late week, we have another push of cold air, and that's going to reinforce cold air over much of the nation, especially the upper Midwest, the northeast U.S., Great Lakes. But that's going to pull down all the way into the south and southeast as well. I mentioned some mixed precipitation. Here's some watches and warnings for winter-type weather right along that moisture coming in from the Pacific, the southerly jet. Now, the NAO, you might say, hey, that's not the AO. I've been talking about the AO or Arctic Oscillation. This is the North Atlantic Oscillation, a little bit more close up for our area where the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, is a driver for the entire circulation. This is an atmospheric imbalance, and I just wanted to show you that it has pushed down into neutral territory uh, from this positive that we've had and generally expected to stay in here. And I, I haven't seen as clear as connection as I usually see um, with the Arctic or the NAO, um, with the impacts of weather. Um, I would expect if we dip into these extremes to have more vulnerability of weather um, and more 
alignment with that cold air pushing down. I think what it's showing is that jet is really not dipping that far down, but Arctic air is still dipping down. So I'll be explaining that more in my newsletter. Now, the driver of the precipitation this week, the heaviest precipitation, these are tracks of low pressure. We really only have one significant low this week, and this is the track. It's going to be going through the southeast U.S., and the heaviest rain is usually to the north and northwest of that low. So keep in mind where that low is, and I'll be showing you the precipitation forecast in just a moment here. And you can see that precipitation axis is right along and northwest of that track of the low. So if the low is a little bit further south, the track will be a little bit further south. Likewise, a little bit further north, the track of the heaviest rainfall will be a little bit further north. But it is pretty significant because it's going to tap some of that Pacific moisture. Look at that, three inches plus right along that axis. That'll be significant, and it will change soil moisture. Now let's look at week two to see how these patterns change. And I think there's some fairly strong signals on week two. Really, over the core of the Midwest, it looks like a dry signal. This is the orange. That's dry. Green is a wet signal. It looks like Texas in the south could be another week of some wet weather in parts of the southeast U.S. It's hard to say where that dividing line is going to be. This is the colder Arctic air. This is the transition zone. But right now, it looks like this region could be somewhat wet, the area in green. But overall, most of the core of the U.S. looks like it's going to be cold and dry. So as far as soil moisture changes this week, I wouldn't get too hung up on these light shades. These are just very modest, either a little bit wetter or a little bit drier. This looks like the primary axis where we do expect, where I do expect significant improvement of soil moisture. And sort of interesting because I've been really focused on the long range outlook by winter weather outlook. And if you've read that, uh, all the climate models, NOAA and myself, are expecting the southeast U.S. to actually be the driest spot as far as the anomalies this winter. Now, I know we really haven't even started the winter months, so I don't, I'm not changing my outlook, but it is interesting that totally opposite of what those outlooks are calling for. So as we round out November, and now we get into early December, I did want to show you that it looks like the prevailing temperature pattern is below normal temperatures, centered over the upper Midwest, and then precipitation looks like a core of above normal precipitation, most likely in the form of snow over the very far upper Midwest, and then this track that extends from Texas into the southeast U.S., perhaps the northeast U.S. as well. So the takeaway, reinforcing Arctic air, one pulse after another, looks like right into early December, the active track for precipitation will be the south, where precipitation could be mixed, form of rain, sleet, snow, and maybe even some freezing rain, into the southeast U.S., where also some chance of freezing precipitation in higher elevations. I hope you enjoyed this briefing. You can always send me a question at john at bluewateroutlook.com. I wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving. I will be talking with you again next week.